Hi, I'm Candace Michelle, and this is Our Community. I'm delighted to have my good friend and dog whisperer extraordinaire back as my guest today, Kelly Hansen. Hi, Kelly. How are you? Hi, Candace. I'm doing great. It is so good to see your face. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, I'm so happy to have you here. (laughs) Mutual admiration society. I love it. I love it. (laughs) So I've seen a lot of Kelly in the past two weeks and plan to see a lot more in the coming weeks. I have company coming for Christmas again this year, and our household has a fairly new member, a five-year-old yellow lab adopted from the shelter back in January. Now, seriously, right? The, yeah. You know, yeah. I Real had life. every Real life. intention of calling Kelly to lend her expertise with helping Miss Daisy May acclimate and making sure that the interactions between her and my 11-year-old lab, black lab girl, Mm. black lab cola, right, were good and appropriate. And then, as it usually does, my days turned into weeks, which then turned into months. We got together and did an interview in July, which was, as usual, jam-packed with good info, but I still hadn't gotten together with Kelly one-on-one. Two weeks ago, it suddenly dawned on me that Christmas was actually barreling towards us, and Miss Daisy had some social skills to learn before my daughter's family, which includes my very active 14-year-old grandson and a five-year-old pug rescue called cheddar cheese. cheese. I can't believe it or not. That's a good one. So they're going to descend on my normally quiet household for Christmas week. The noise level alone is enough to drive one bonkers. Especially when you live a pretty quiet, sedate lifestyle. Exactly. And your dogs do too. Right. Where the, the loudest thing in my house, well, Occasionally, the loudest thing in my house is the TV because mm-hmm. Phil's TV ears don't work. But um, usually, the loudest thing is me announcing, who has to go potty? <laughs> Which I am not doing that anymore, Kelly. We talked about that. We did we? talk about that. What happens when you announce to the world in big, loud voice, we're going potty, and your oh, dogs are hanging out not doing much? Yeah, OMG, right? What I mean, happened, though? Well, what happens is that my young one then barrels towards my older one and is like in her face, basically saying, we're going potty, we're going potty, we're going potty, right? And poor Cola is, you know, 11 years old, a little tired, a little like, really? Yeah. All this at the front door. Actually, it happens even before we get to the front door. Oh, goodness. Because if Cola is laying on the couch resting, Daisy's in her face. And it's, it's not a good thing. So... Because Kelly actually saw that interaction, thank you, we are not doing that anymore. I am simply standing up from my chair and walking to the front door, Mm -hmm. and everybody is so much quieter. Fabulous. I know. You did tell me when I was there that your dogs do come up and announce kind of in a way that you two communicate with. You understand when they come to you and give you a little nudge or stare at you. Isn't that right? Yes. You know. Yes. They have to go potty. Yes. But n- I'm not announcing it anymore. Her, right. Right? Right. So they, they let me know, and I just get up and go to the door. Brilliant. Instead of... So sometimes only one needs to go outside, not both of them. Maybe Cola doesn't all, need to get they, up off the couch. Yeah, but they both like to go out. Okay. If If one needs to go out, the other one will. Okay. Just, just because mm-hmm. they like it outside, so... So now maybe your door rituals are becoming a little calmer, at least. Much calmer. In the future when all this uh, activity happens at Christmas time. Right. Which could, yeah. Yeah. And and I will have a conversation with my daughter before she gets here about how we need to bring that level down a little bit. And what a lovely thing to do, not just for the sanity of your home and all the humans in it, but the sanity of the pet's. There yes. and you know, really understanding and respecting them. Yep. There's one thing having a household full of puppies and a household full of really active animals who are social. Mm-hmm. But then on the flip side, 
You have an 11-year-old who's lived a lot of her life by herself as a solitary dog. Yes. She's social, yes. but she lives with two people in a pretty sedate environment. Right. Um, so that's not necessarily... That t- that individual typically isn't the one that's going to be the first at the party. And oh, yes. Yeah, waving the banners isn't. and, hey, yeah. let's play. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's pretty much, call me when it's over, okay? I'm just going to I'm just gonna go over here. <laughs> and don't you know people like that? I do. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really, it's, it's really kind to, to just yes. be respectful of all the guests that are in your home, not just people guests, but animals. Right. We're the ones bringing them in and socializing them. So let's make it a little easier on them. And expecting them. We expect yep. them to just kind of, you know, adapt. Sure. But, and it can be kind of crazy. But yes. what you're doing is really lovely, and that is anticipating that it could be very energetic and you have dogs who aren't. Although you're new, Daisy, she's pretty energetic. Yes. I think that she's going to do really well with your people. And I think she's going to do pretty well with uh, cheddar cheese um, as I'm this book. <laughs> I've never met cheddar cheese. I just You have, will. Just the stories that you've told. You will. Um, she's, th- this little pug has come to have friends in the past. She might be kind of rough and tumble. But the more that we uh, continue to work with Daisy, mm-hmm. um, dog parks like we've been doing, dog uh, walks like you've been doing with your help Mm -hmm. and your friends, Mm -hmm. the more you do, the more she'll go, oh, yeah, when the party, you know, the party happens. Oh, yeah, I've been there. Okay, cool. Right. I'll be fine. Right. And she'll be, it'll be a lot easier to manage her Mm -hmm. because there's so much to manage when people come, not just what the animals are doing, but you certainly, lots of times we want to make sure that our guests are happy and they have everything and there's food and there's people to move and activities. So, yep. Doing this little bit of homework before the activity it happens is a real nice thing to do. So I thought the whole thing about the dog park was very interesting. I I just learned so much from from doing that. So Kelly and I decided to meet at the dog park. Kelly, you were bringing your dog. Yes, but let's go back to that okay. first. What did you realize before we were going to go to oh, the dog park? Heavens. Because she had adopted Daisy in January. January, yes. And, and that was the one and only time that Daisy had been in the car. Yay. So I had never put her in the car since I brought her home in January, and it was September. So for nine months... That kid had not gotten in the car, and I'm, and I realized it as I'm trying to get her in the car, right? <laughs> and she's like, "Oh no, what's a car? Right. Or and, at least what's this car?" Yes, yeah, right. But also, I, 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 it smells funny. It, it's not me. I, I haven't been in this vehicle. This isn't. So yeah, that that was interesting, mm-hmm. and it was. <laughs> I felt so bad. Right, but because she did so well. I know, but but but, and and I say this because I know I'm not the only person who just kind of goes unconscious when there's Absolutely. life is going, you know, full Absolutely. bore, and you just forget stuff yeah. like your your dog doesn't know how to get into the car, not mm-hmm. because it can't, but because you haven't done it. Mm-hmm. It has not been something that you've done. Lots of times people who live rurally have oh, lots of property yeah, yeah. and maybe there's neighbors in a, you know, a couple mm-hmm. acres away. And unless you're taking them to the dog to the vet, you don't really need to put them in the car. Right. I've lived in places where the vet comes to you. Ah. So the people, the owners sometimes like, well, my dog never gets in the car. There's no reason to. Right. Except that I think eventually there's a possibility that they might. So why not? get them used to these things that they might have to do in the future yes. because our lives can change in a heartbeat, as we all know. So I just like to, again, look forward ahead of the dog's life and see, does it need to get used to that? I mean, Daisy has never been to, at least you've never taken Daisy into the vet before. No. Nope. So that's something to get used to. Yep. So yep. we were we were talking, thinking, we're going to take the dogs to the dog park. And then you realize, wait a minute, uh, there is some training that might need to happen. There might be some issues here. <laughs> I have to, and I have to find out if my dog can even or even wants to 
get in the car. Right. And luckily, she'd been, she's had some really nice experiences. I can see that through her behavior because mm -hmm. I, I think she did really well. And this last experience you had with her by yourself and she jumped up all by herself. That was, yeah. That was lovely. Yeah. And it, and it was interesting because the, so the first time I got her into the car, I thought, well, she'll get in the front seat. And you know, I realized as we're driving to the dog park that that's very uncomfortable for her. It's she, that's not where she wants to be. <laughs> so I thought, all right, well then, then we have to do the back seat. But I bought one of those things that's kind of like a sling that you put mm -hmm. over top of the headrests and the front and the back, and she loves that. So that that works. Beautifully, it's a nylon kind of a thin mm -hmm. nylon material. Mm -hmm. If I were to try to put my Mia in there mm -hmm. and I made that little wee 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 sound that oh, nylon makes, oh nope, I would have had to work with nylon in the house first. This is what nylon sounds like. She's <laughs> a princess. She has anxiety disorder. Yeah, it, she does. Not that that's a explains everything, but when she says. That I'm not comfortable with that. I just can draw a little line in the sand and go, okay, let me work to get you used to that. I don't want her walking around the planet thinking, oh, my God, nylon. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> or, exactly. Uh, it, what is, so there's lots of things. Um, backfiring cars, loud engines, she does not do well. Way better than when she was little because when she was little, she told me, at least in her behavior, mm -hmm. she acted fearful. Mm -hmm. and, and that tells me. I need to work on that because I don't want her to have that kind of anxiety. There's no real reason to. The world isn't that And see, that's scary. the thing that I absolutely adore about you is that you actually, you hear them when they talk. I mean, you, you see it, you understand what they're saying, and you... Well, for the most part. You listen. I, I try. Well, you do a really good job. I think, I think a lot of us who love our animals to pieces don't actually listen, you know, or, mm -hmm. or don't actually watch because we have our idea about what we think should happen yep. and we have an opinion about why the dog isn't doing what we want them to do, mm -hmm. which may not be based at all on actual fact. Absolutely. So much of it is based in what did it look like when you were little? Mm -hmm. And what did the people who mentored you told you? Are dogs supposed to be outside all the time? I know a lot of people. That was the way it started in my family. Depends on yep. where you live yep. and what your lifestyle is like. There are um, dogs who are carried around in little bitty purses and giving <laughs> gourmet meals. <laughs> There are sometimes people make fun of them. <laughs> there are big gigantic dogs that are have, live the right. same lifestyle. You know, it just really is with the human how you want to share your life with the dog that you brought into your life. Do you adore it? Do you recognize it has doggy needs and not necessarily people needs? I don't know that the dog needs to be carried around in a purse all the time. <laughs> you know, the ground might be a nice thing. <laughs> I don't know. It all kind of depends on what the purse looks like. I mean, you know. <laughs> Respecting the animal, not to mention its breed and its age. It right. breed, it breed has lots to do with what it has a tendency to do, what its behaviors are. Right. So understanding the breed and the age and its experience. So when you bring this little critter into your home, was it a baby? Hardly any experience. Now, it, hardly any experience means you look at the breed. Mm -hmm. And what does the dog, it's predisposed to do, naturally has a tendency to do, and think, okay, if I get a border collie into my home, there's a tendency it's going to act like a border collie, and what does that behave like? Right. So, there's, you know, the internet shows you all kinds of ways that dogs behave. So, um, Doing a little research is not a, a bad idea, is right? A, is a yeah. nice thing. Right. Because you've had a border collie before doesn't mean the, the next one you have is going to behave similarly. Its behavior can go from real lackadaisical, a border collie who's like, yeah, yeah, I don't care about hurting anything or pushing things or moving things, to dogs who have a real <laughs> pronounced prey drive. Yes. And that's all they really want to do. Yeah. So understanding what you're getting from a breeder if you're not going to a breeder. I mean, there's so much involved in right. bringing a, a dog into your home. But once they are there, 
pay attention. Yeah. What are they what do they wiggle and get excited about? What are they fearful of? It's kind of like bringing in a child into your home that doesn't speak your language. Yeah. You take a little bit of time to acclimate and and you know figure out a communication style all yeah. based on mutual respect and understanding and and if you're bringing a dog in from a, a shelter for instance that dog probably has a past and it's good to know what you can know oh you mean that there's a known past yes well sometimes yeah you know, there's lots of dogs that are at shelters that yeah. are just found and right. nobody has any idea about them right yeah but I knew a little bit about Daisy before I got her. I knew she had been she had been living with a man who died yeah. up in Coos Bay. Yeah. And um so I I knew that she had been domesticated. Yeah. You know, Good she, to know. Right. And when you brought her home, your eleven year old Cola said, Well, she's okay. Right. And the and there never was any I'm gonna eat her face, right? Never. Beautiful. No. No, really good. Never. Um, I, I think at first Daisy was okay with Cola being the dominant oh, sure. one, right? But that didn't last for more than a couple of weeks. You know, Six to eight weeks typically. Yeah, Daisy's kind of like... She kind of figures out, oh, yeah. I guess I'm here to stay. Uh, and I guess I can rule the roost now a little bit Now let's talk more. about pack <laughs> ranking. <laughs> exactly. And Cola, I'm sorry, but you're a little bit lower than I am. But, well, but <laughs> yeah. correct, and that might... Yeah, Daisy might be saying that, but uh, Cola doesn't necessarily have to go, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to respect that. No. So. No. And I make sure that Daisy is the second dog in the house, that when I take them both out, Cola gets to come in uh-huh. first because that's her place. She gets sometimes to. That's a, that's a good – I think that's a good habit to get into just because sometimes – you're going to let one in the home before you're going to let the other one in. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen any hard study that says that that's part of it, that right. the alpha doesn't always go first because, hey, I grew up in a family of six kids. My mom would say, you get to go first. <laughs> Oldest girl gets, she's the one deciding. <laughs> yeah. It's not always no, her. True. She can say right. the baby gets to go first this time. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot to that pack stuff. So the whole dog park thing, I mean, one, yeah, once we the actually got there. You're right. We right? did get there. And we did. We yep. did get there. And, you know, so they, my dog and your dog kind of did a little butt sniff mm-hmm. thing right out in the parking lot where they. Yeah, it's first day. I certainly saw each other. He got out of the car, and that's important. Where what that looks like when mm-hmm. we're first introducing dogs to one another. It's a good idea to you know give a lot of space to not necessarily do it on one dog's home turf. Mm-hmm. It's always a nice thing. Um, what would if if it were not going to go well? How would that have looked? Oh. You somebody Apples. probably a human probably wouldn't have been prepared, and the because dogs have a tendency to look and see first mm-hmm. when you're still turning around trying to close the door uh-huh. and get the keys, uh-huh. and you might have like uh, you someone could have been pulled to the ground depending on how big the dog is. Oh, that because the dog's going to react first. So if this is a dog who is not social mm-hmm. and or is a uh, defensive animal, like I'm going to get you before you get me, mm-hmm. then it could have. Daisy could have just gone right over to Mia to try to, again, eat her face. Mia would have gone right on the ground right away. She's a not a – she is a submissive dog. Mm-hmm. She's not one that's going to take the, the top. She likes to play, but she'd prefer to be second mm-hmm. or third would be good for her. Mm-hmm. There's no need. She's not – I don't need to take the lead, never needs to take the lead. Um, but when there's a, a doggy individual that is like always uh, – not always, but – takes that lead, wants to go first, there's something in that leash. The Is the dog always attached to a lead? Is there always a gate or a fence in front of it? Because that can be false. Uh, false, I'm a big, tough dog. Mm. Take the fence away or open up the door, and lots of times, not 100% of the mm-hmm. time, but a lot of the time, that dog who looks big and mean and ugly on the on the on the other side of the fence doesn't look so big and mean and ugly because they really don't have any social skills. So if they if the gate were open and the dog gets out, uh, it's a fight or flight thing. So this dog behind a fence all the time goes, oh, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> I guess it's I guess it's fighting. 
I've never really been socialized, so I guess right. that's what I have to do. But sometimes th there is a social ability in there. Mm -hmm. And again, they understand, uh oh, there's no barrier. Oops. Oops. Now I have to rely on this doggy behavior that's innate in me, mm -hmm. that these signals that we throw that I kind of understand. I remember them from puppyhood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. That's why it's important for dogs to kind of hang out with one another. They do speak a language. They do need to practice it. Most, Almost all puppies, almost all puppies, when you pick them up at three days old, yawn. And yawning is a calming signal. It's mm. It says, I'm okay, you're okay, I'm in conflict. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the very, very first things they do. They can't open their eyes at that point. They really have no motor skills, really, right, uh, right, out, of the, right out of the mommy. Yep. So they do develop this uh, language that they speak, and I think it's important for us to understand even a little bit of it. You know what yawning means and what when they turn their head and turn their back on another dog, what, what that butt sniff means, mm -hmm. depending on what breed you have, where their ears and where their tail are right, right. when they're calm and relaxed versus when they're in an environment where it's, uh, it's aroused. Dog, you know, hackles on a dog doesn't mean that this is aggressive. It means that they're overstimulated. You know, kind of like us, we get goosebumps sometimes. That doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean we're cold all the time. Right. Goosebumps can mean something else. So depending on what's going on in the environment, same thing with dogs. My dog, Mia, the wind blows hard and she, she, her hackles go up. She, you know, <laughs> a leaf in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> She's stimulated, but also she could be making herself look a little bit bigger if there's a foe out there. Mm -hmm. She doesn't necessarily want to make herself look little, right. which would – it uh, her hackle well, – she could be hackled, but she would be laying down. Her ears would be back. This dog has ears that sit way up on her head like – a shepherd on steroids, like a Basenji. Right, one. right. Big, tall ears, almost like horse ears. It's really, they're kind of easy to read if you know the language. Right. So if you just know a couple of these behaviors or the language that they speak, it sure does make our life easier. And then in turn, we can make the dog's life easier. Right. So these dog parks, inter uh, dog park interactions, you can kind of see before it even happens. If this is a, this play group is too much for your dog, or if the the dog approaching your dog, it's it's too much. You can see it in behavior, and that's obviously critical if you if you want to make sure that everybody's everybody stays okay, safe. <laughs> yes, everybody oh, sure. stays safe. Always exactly, nice exactly. Yeah. So the key really is having your dog in situations in different situations so that you can see what the reaction is mm -hmm. and paying attention so that you remember what it looks like when your dog is stressed. You know, that's a really good point that you remember to pay attention. Yeah. Lots of times we take them places, let's go to the farmer's market. Yeah. Yeah. So what does the farmer, what does that whole outing look like in your mind's eye? If you could paint, the, if you could take a picture, what does it look like? You're probably not training your dog at that picture, are you? Mm -mm. You're probably thinking that your dog is behaving perfectly fine at your side, and it's a. And any, you're you remember Lassie? On... We all remember Lassie, Absolutely. a really, really well-behaved animal. Yeah, you just think that's what it's going to be right. like. But that, I think, I don't know. That's a, that's not a large population of the doggy community. Isn't the one that can just go into every situation without any training and be perfectly fine. Those dogs that heal perfectly and come back when you call them and never jump on people and you can take them to dog parks and crazy places and they'll be perfectly fine. They're out there. There's a lot of them out there, but it took work to get them there. Right, right. And, or luck. You know, you might uh, have lucked out and gotten the dog. That's the rare one. Yes. It, but it's a the, the dog that you get uh, and the human that you get together. Right. That's really important. Right. To, and again, looking out for the dog. Is this a good idea to take the dog to the dog park uh, when it's never been? And if it's never been and it's a really, really active dog park with a, a lot of dogs, maybe you go at an off hour. You might meet people who have dogs that are very social with a kind of a sedate play style, depending on the age and breed of your dog. Um, maybe setting up a little bit of a, a 
a play group with a dog if you can, a neighbor's dog or a friend's dog before. And this is what I mean when you're adopting a dog and they come into your life and you really have no experience with them. Right. And it is your idea to take them places then. Sometimes it's really easy to tell. Sometimes not so easy because there's that six to eight week period Mm -hmm. when you first bring them home that it shouldn't be filled with all kinds of crazy stuff. But at the same time, you kind of want to show them what your life and what the world is about. Right. But just kind of not on full strength, you know. Yeah, pretty much I didn't do any of that. You know, for for and his, that's so for normal. nine months, right. you know, Daisy has been, you know, in our home, and they're you know, so forgiving. I tell you, I know dogs just really. put up with so much from us. I know they really, do. they really, do. <laughs> they really do. And you're finally gonna put me in the car, Mom. <laughs> God, God. you finally gonna take me and ha- let me be around another dog besides this old bag sitting on the couch. You know, yeah, she did great. Yeah, she did. She did. Which means now in the future you can expect her to do well because she right. told you what the bar is, right? And now you can go forward. Mean It doesn't mean that you stop there. It means that you're going to take her out places that are a little bit more exciting and then have a little bit more going on in them and test well, her. Well, it was and- great the, because the dog park we went to has, has two fenced areas. So we went into the one that didn't have anybody else in it because I think the first time we went there might have been other dogs in that, mm-hmm. in the other one. Um, and that gave... And then I could take her off her leash because yep. she was on her leash all the time yep. up until then. So then she and Mia could sniff and play and, you know, do what do what dogs do without having to interact with weird dogs on the other side of the fence. And that seemed to go really well. Hey, sometimes when you have a dog park that has two or three different sections, those are typically for different play styles. You know, there'll be active dogs over here. Some people think big dogs over there, small dogs over here, but sometimes really small dogs are really, about, really active. Yeah. It seems to me it would be more about behavior. Yeah. Yeah. Like how aggressive and, you know, yeah. out there yeah. are they? And yeah. yeah. The idea is, though, that those dogs that go to the dog park are social. It's not the place to discover whether you have an aggressive dog. That's why I said do a little bit of homework first mm-hmm. before you just take a dog that you don't know to a, a an open, <laughs> take the leash off. Mm-hmm. You know, don't just take them from the shelter to a dog park. Yeah, you know, not you have a great fig- idea. No. No. They don't know who you are. Again, right. there's that six to eight week of here's your family, here's who we are, here's what the rules are. And so you're on a lead or on a control in a controlled environment giving them a little bit more lead, a little bit more, a little bit more tether, if you will. And then once they show you that they are a trustee and they have nice behaviors, then you can take the lead off. Um, Doggy parks, I always have a lead on me somewhere because I've had to leash other people's dogs before. (laughs) That just seems incredible to me. It's like a kid. It's like a child's play yard, you Mm -hmm. know. If somebody's getting, if another child's getting bullied and there are, others who can stop the bullying, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. And it's not like I I grabbed onto the dog and said, whose horrible animal is this? Ah!" (laughs) That just means that that dog needs to practice in an environment that's like that, but less exciting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it's a bad dog and it should go home and it shouldn't, you know, you're not good with others. No, no, no. You are. You just get to a point where you kind of go over the top. So let's work at kind of bringing that back a little bit. So that the dog can go to dog parks and can be off lead. It's fascinating to me because, you know, for a long time, I thought that there were good dogs and there were bad dogs. And it, it, that's not really true. There are dogs that have different degrees of socialization and different degrees of training and different a different ability to tolerate excitement. They, I mean... They're kind of like people. <laughs> We're all different, She's right? In my mind, the whole time I'm going, say they're like people. <laughs> I mean, you know, people. we're all different. Different countries. Exactly. All kinds of different, all kinds of different things that we do. But, you know, innately, we're right down to it. We're, we're all human beings. Yes. There's, yeah. you know, don't push me. I won't push you kind of thing physically. Right. 
you know, there's bottom line things that human beings do that are acceptable and it isn't. And I think dogs are very similar. Yep. And then the the more intricate behaviors and that you know, we spend more time together, that kind of thing. But in first meeting, you don't pick up a stick and hit somebody with it. <laughs> You know, Probably not a that's great not the best way, way to yeah introduce yourself. Uh, no, no. <laughs> in a good or a bad way. Somebody right. might come and hit you with a stick. So we're not, you know, the idea is that dogs don't come into a space and rawr, right away. You know what I mean? Uh, overwhelm or intimidate right. another. That lots of times those are insecure dogs that just like oh nobody told me any other way to do it, and this right. is the only way I've been right. taught to do it because nobody taught me any other way. Right, which to me is kind of. Sad because it means yeah. the dog doesn't get out and doesn't have a, a full rounded right. um, experience. Yeah, and I like dogs that get to have full rounded experience. Well, and and speaking from somebody who has spent the last nine months doing it, um, not the best way. Um, I can say that my intentions were always really good. Mm -hmm. um, so I understand. People's intentions are really good. They yeah. want to take care of their dogs, and and yeah. and life just sometimes yeah. is happening at sixty miles an hour, and you just you do what you can. You make sure that they're fed, and that sometimes is as much as as you can do. You know, you can make sure that they're fed, and you can take instead of five minutes, you could take ten or twelve or fifteen. You could do just a little teeny bit of training, yep. a little bit of one-on-one -on -one with them. Yep. Even that's just playing with them, mm -hmm. interacting with them, teaching them a basic behavior a little bit. I mean, I get it. Life gets really busy, but we start, we prioritize things. Right. And so I'd like to say, can we put dogs um, higher up on the, they don't have, they are, you know, as far as the pack hierarchy goes, I like to say that they're low dog on the totem pole. It's important for them to understand that, but- that's not a bad place to be. That should be a good place to be. And again, they should be considered and respected. So. Right, right. Well, I've noticed that if I take um, an extra few minutes and when I'm feeding them, mm -hmm. if before I put the food, the, the yep. bowl down, yep. I ask them to sit. Lovely. And ask them to stay. Perfect. While I'm putting the bowl down, they stay. Leader. And then I say, okay. Nice. It it doesn't take that long mm -hmm. to do that, you know, maybe an extra five minutes. Easy. But but it is easy, and it reinforces the fact that, that I'm the pack leader mm -hmm. um, and, and that if they do what I ask them to do, there's a reward. And you know the other thing is when they do what we um, ask them to do, isn't there all re there's also a reward in your head and your mind that you go, wow, really cool. I want to do that again. Yeah. I want to interact with my dog more. I want to yeah. do that again. Hey, maybe, hey, I taught them to spin around in a circle clockwise. Hmm. Huh. What would it look like <laughs> if they spun around in the opposite direction? You could do yes. that. Yeah. And all these things really are spending time with your animal one on one that's so important right for their mental and your mental that's really important because you brought them into your home for a reason right some people bring them into homes for uh, sometimes they don't bring them into the home sometimes it's sorry dog you're outside you're guarding something or right Right. And that those can be good situations if this is these are herding dogs and that's what they're supposed to do and right they're again that level of respect but understanding what it is that they're supposed to be doing uh, what are they doing on a on a daily basis and you brought them into your life probably because you liked them and you thought they were cool and yeah. maybe you want to cozy up and take yes. them for a walk and isn't they <laughs> aren't they pretty. Uh, isn't this the sweetest thing? So taking a little extra time is as much for the dog as it is for us. Yep. yep. And the more you do it, the more you're probably going to want to do it. So I think the second time we were at the dog park, um, there was there were um, some dogs in the big yard, and they and they were a little bit over the top as far as Terriers. I was concerned. They were big 
No, the big ones. Yeah. Were they, is that what they were? Yeah, they were Terry's. So they left, and we went into the big yard. And then yeah. there were two other dogs that came, mm-hmm. right? They were kind of small. Boston Terriers. Okay. Yeah. And the, and they, I my dog was a little bit anxious about that. Was that, your dog more anxious for the little ones or the bigger ones? I think the little ones, because the little ones were in the yeah. yard. Well, the big ones were, they were, um, I don't know, they look like a smaller Airedale type, mm-hmm. which is a medium breed, maybe mm-hmm. 50 pounds, mm-hmm. maybe. Um, but these two were very active. They weren't in our face. They weren't coming st- straight up, being uh, offensive. Right. They were kind of coming up and keeping a little bit of a distance and circling around a little bit and slowing down, which is fine. Um, they wanted to be playful. Daisy a couple of times kind of had to, you know, back off just a little bit, and those dogs got it. They understood it, and they, you know, everybody got some space. Those Boston Terriers came into the room. Oh, huh, that was a completely different. Go, go, go! Right. In your face, in your face! Oh, you told me you didn't want it. Ah, I'm gonna come to the other side. It's like, jeez, <laughs> ain't no right. She told you, I look at, I we're all at the party. I don't, you know, this isn't doesn't have to be a freaking mosh pit for goodness sakes. You know, golly. <laughs> It's not the way I want to dance. I'm right. more like old time rock and roll, you know. Right. Come on, <laughs> Truly. give me some, give me some space. We yeah. all, they're all different. They yeah. all need a little slower time. So the beautiful part of that, we recognize that and recognize that both our dogs weren't comfortable and simply slipped into the yard. The there's two separate yards, like you said, right. and we just slipped into the yard where. Um, you can have a little bit there. Nobody else was there. Right. Puppies or older dogs or whatever can right. go there. So right. we were able to distance everybody. Our dogs were away from the fence enough, but those Bos- those Bostons were at the fence like, hey, hey, <laughs> hey, what are you? <laughs> Jeez. I mean, I they, it was a lot. Somebody might think, boy, those are really aggressive little dogs. That's just their energy There's level. Lots of dogs who can handle that kind yeah. of play style and right. understand it. They weren't being aggressive per se. It, I think it was a little. They they should have respected the dog, the, our dog's language, and you know what? We're just not. You know. Yeah. We want to go slower. We want to take our time. Could you, could you back off a little bit? That first group, they got it. Those right. two Airedales, they went, oh, okay, we'll be over here if you want. Yeah. They don't, we don't need to be with dogs who are constantly in your dog's face. So if you go to a dog park and um, you do find yourself and your dog is very uncomfortable and there might be a dog that's constantly coming back, one th- I find one thing that lots of times will not happen is the owner isn't going to do anything about it. So the mm-hmm. best thing you can do is keep your leash with you and simply take your dog and just go. Mm-hmm. You thought you might be there for a half an hour, but sorry, this is a, you know, the party's a little bit different. This isn't the kind of play style we want. Right. The, um, very rarely, I think, will people want to help to correct their dog and put a lead on. Most people will say, oh, they're friendly. Let the dogs figure it out. Mm-hmm. But I no. don't think that's a good idea. No, no, I'd rather not. Yeah. It just doesn't seem like. A good idea. Yeah. So they're, you know, go at a different time, take your dog on a different walk. Just if you, we can all be uh, a little uh, not so rigid in our planning. You know, if you're going to take your dog for a walk and it's always, you know, you go up the street, make a right, and you make a right and you keep going around the block, right. go a different way sometimes. Yeah. Have a different experience for your dog. Again, if you thought you were going to go to the dog park and you get there and there's a lot going on, then nope. I've got to the dog park before and no one's there. It's like, oh man. I really wanted someone. <laughs> Oops. So she might get out for a minute to just potty, but I, I'm going to have to come back at another time because I, the experiences that I wanted for her is not what's going on there now. So just... Um, and what I noticed when um, Daisy and your dog, Mia, were playing was they they did this play bow thing, yeah. which I had never actually noticed before. But it's so cool. It's a, hey, it's a really great thing to to notice. And almost every dog does it. Um, and that is if you your dog, you're looking at your dog standing sideways. Um, it's Imagine its front legs 
their shoulders dipped a little bit, and so their chest is getting lower to the ground, but their bottom and their back legs stay straight. Mm -hmm. So kind of looks like they're mooning someone back there. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes that play bow can be a real deep bend, almost like a yoga pose. Hmm. Mia does an exaggerated um, play bow. Some dogs I know do just hardly, they hardly dip their front shoulders at all, just a little dip, dip. They don't go to the ground. They don't have to. You can. It's like saying hi to somebody, a real long, drawn out, or just, hey. Yeah. Right. It depends on what's going on as well, what the what's what else is going on in the environment. Right. But when I see that, I know 99% of the time, the dog that bowed is just said, you're okay, you're cool to the other. Nice. It uh, doesn't mean we're going to be cool 100% of the mm -hmm. time during this interaction, but that moment right there, you're cool. And the other social dog will typically do it back in a in a little bit or a big exaggerated play bow. And then that's like, okay, game on. Okay, we can be cool with each other. Let's go play and let's be friends. It's it's just amazing to watch. And 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 what I really loved about it was that you were standing there the whole time interpreting for me. So yeah, that was that was super valuable. I have a tendency to narrate. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I love it because for the for those of us who are not, you know, sure. really, you know, verbose in dog language, that we don't know, right? We we don't know. So aren't when, you learning a new language? I I am actually doing French. Yeah, see, yeah. I I remember a little teeny bit of French from when I was in high school, but I'm not good at it. You're probably way better at it. I'm so thinking there. It's a yeah. it's another language. It is another. Language. It is another language, yeah. and it doesn't. It's not. It's not super complex. Even if you just knew the top five words or the top five behaviors in w what a dog does, you know, turning its head and yawning and flicking its tongue. Um, actually, turning its back on something. There's, there. It's slowing down. Uh, turn again. Serpentining, going around the, another dog or making circles, is pacifying behavior. It tells the other dog, "I'm okay. You're okay." At the same time, it can say, "I'm in conflict." Mm. Slow down. Mm. Everybody, dogs understand what it is. Mm -hmm. It's up to people. People don't always understand what it is. Mm -hmm. People sometimes think hackles raised always means the dog is aggressive. No, it doesn't. No, it, sometimes it does. Right. It means they're overstimulated. We have to look and say, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, is Mia just all hackles from the tip of her tail all the way all the way to the, the back of her, her neck. Oh my gosh. I've never seen a dog really raise its hackles more than her. It's, wow. And it's just because she's really insecure. Yeah. She's really, I'm not sure of the world. So her whole, oh, her body screams to the world, I'm not, I'm not okay. Everybody can slow down a Everybody little bit. Everybody back off, okay? And they do. Yeah. And so her, she used to be exaggerated. Now it's pretty much from mid back to mm -hmm. her collar. She doesn't have to do the whole body. She's two and a half now. So she's getting a lot more confident and because right. I take her more places and she has more experiences. But she's still the same baseline. Oh, I'm not sure. Right. I'm not sure of the world. Well, that's her personality. And, and that I never ch change, you know, really yeah. change. And right? like I said before, when she first came home, I recognized who she was mm -hmm. and what her needs are. And is she the dog that wants to go to the dog park or a farmer's market or a party with a whole bunch of people? Nope. Yeah. She wouldn't have been placed because I know, well, the person who I rescued her from is the person that does a, a lot of rescue mm -hmm. and places the dog with the people. You could say, I really want that black and white one. And she would say that black and white one is not for you. Yep. I'm going to. I'm going to put the behavior, the temperament of the animal with the one that you say this is the lifestyle you want. And Which that's I totally so smart. appreciate. Oh, I know. That's it's my, so smart. That's my sister. I love your sister. Yeah, she's good. I've not met your sister, she's but great. I obviously she's love She's great. Her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So and so I ended up with Mia because Mia has anxiety disorder and we could see that from day 1 and it's like, well, Kelly. Yep. Yep. <laughs> if you want a new one to work mommy. with and I went, ah, I guess I can. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. 
I can give her her best life. Yes. I recognize when she's overwhelmed and I can push her in a situation and not get her to that point. Get her to the point where she wants to go back to that thing. Mm -hmm. She didn't go to the dog park and get overwhelmed and intimidated by others. So next time she's like, nope. Yeah. She's right. like, kind of like Daisy. Yeah. Did we took Daisy and she went, well, there's nobody here and this was nice and the mm -hmm. car ride was fun. Mm -hmm. And then we introduced her to Mia and that went well. And then another group of little ones and that went well. So each time we take her, she's having more experiences, which gets her more practice. Yes. Which yeah. means... And allows her to feel more confident. Absolutely. In and you as situ... well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because, I, and you keep telling me this and... And I remember it, but it doesn't mean I can change it immediately, right? Uh -huh. But I, you keep telling me that my stuff, my emotions, my yeah. anxiety goes right down that right. leash, right? And that's right. And it's just, it's hard to remember that. Um, it's something to, it's something to put in. Yes, there's, I mean, so much when you're walking them, and you know, when you're really trying to pay attention and do some work with them. If one of the things you understand is how to hold that lead, mm -hmm. let's not wrap it around. You hold on to the end of the lead and wrap it around your your wrist and your fist. And so before you know it, there's like, I don't know, maybe 18 inches between mm -hmm. the end of your hand and the dog's collar, and it's tight. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, you typically calm people. don't. That's not a calm thing to do. You're nervous already. That's right. why you wrapped it around your hand so much. Right. You don't know if you can control your animal. So instead of doing that, it might be better to back off and learn how to control your dog before you put them on a lead. Because really, we should be able to put them on a lead and walk them with it being loose. Mm -hmm. And they can all do that. Mm -hmm. It's just as how much work do we want to put in. Some dogs, I swear, I've met dogs that do that on day one. I, I would never pull you on a lead. Why would you even think I would pull you on? Right, <laughs> and those the others you anything you put on their collar instantly they're out all yes. the way to the very end if it's yes. four feet or if it's forty feet all the way out to the very end pulling. yes yes and but that can be worked with as well that was like well, my very first dog to work with good yeah. right and and Daisy was doing that mm -hmm. and you told me mm -hmm. just stop that's right just stop and you know I and so I say to her. You know, if you pull, I'm not moving. And she had to fix the leash, right? Yep. Right. So she had to make the leash loose again, Yep. not you pulling it back, yep. right? Exactly. So a dog will pull at the end of the leash and make it taut, and then lots of times the people will pull back. Right. But that doesn't, that just teaches the dog that, you know, mommy used to be 140. She kind of feels like 150 now, the way she, <laughs> you gain some weight back there. I have to pull a little bit harder when I'm pulling you down the street this time. Right, but I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to pull. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm so not interested in being pulled by my dog. Not lots of no, I don't know very many people that are. Hey, unless you're teaching your dog to pull a cart or something. Right. And or if that, they're a, a that's something. dog that pulls sleds. There I you mean, go. You know, that's that's yeah. that's something, but yeah. that's not but not that's me. That's not what a typical six foot lead means. It shouldn't no. mean drag us down the road to a dog. But unless you taught a dog what that means, how are they supposed to know? No, exactly. People think, ah, you know, yell <laughs> yell louder at a dog when you want them to do something. No! They're now, getting attention, which is what they want. They want the attention, and so you yell, and they're getting mm -hmm. it. So that's a positive reinforcement. Do you remember those three things that dogs are rewarded by that I uh, talked about all the time? I uh -huh. looking Look. at them and touching them and talking oh, to them. Very nice. Besides food Yay! treats. So <laughs> so you reward a dog. It, unbeknownst to you, the dog jumps up on you and you look down at them and you push them off with your hands and you look at them and push them off and at the same time say, no, bad dog, get off. In essence, what you're doing is rewarding them because they're rewarded by looking at you. Or look um, eye to eye contact. Mm -hmm. Look at me. Talk to me and touch me. And then add food and play to it. Mm -hmm. So, when a dog jumps on you, there are ways to have that not happen. I mean, there's l really easy ways to get a dog to not jump on you, or for them not to be rewarded. Right. And it's just as easy. Not hey, look at I've worked with Great Danes and really, really large dogs, heavy dogs. 
dogs that when they jump on you, it's not just a tap. It feels like they're punching you. Yes. It hurts. Yes. Those are not necessarily dogs that you can turn right. and, you know, not give them any attention. You might have to do something else. Some dogs you can just turn and give no attention to. Mia's perfect. She'd be, oh, you know, how offensive. You, you, Mommy turned away from me. I get it. You don't like me in this moment. <laughs> But, hey, Pugs. But Mia is really smart. I mean, she's a really well, smart she's, dog. She, well, what she does is and, walk around the yeah. world trying to avoid those things that kind of freak her out. Right. So right. I guess that's, I think they're all really smart. Yeah, yeah. They're all, exactly. they're all smart. It doesn't, yeah. they don't have to know people behavior to be smart. They figure stuff out. Yeah. They know They can get their food. They can get places. They can do stuff. They can get out of situations. They can get you to do things oh, unbeknownst to you. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. <laughs> it's like they can really? get us to do a lot of stuff. Yeah. 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 So, so mm -hmm. one of the other things, um, because we're starting to run out of time, um, one of the other things I wanted to bring up was the behavior of other dogs. So I have uh, neighbors who have dogs on the other side of my fence. And um, those dogs are very reactive to my dogs. Um, and and really, mostly, it's Daisy. I mean, they don't care a lot about Cola, but Cola never cared about them, which is probably mm -hmm. the point, right? Mm -hmm. But Daisy really cares, and it's yeah. become this game now. I get it. Yeah where Daisy flies up to the fence and is barking her head off, and this other little dog on the other side is barking its head off. Yeah, a little bitty thing. Oh, my. I mean, the noise is enough to... And and they sound like one is killing the other. Yeah. So that has to stop. Oh, absolutely. It has to stop for the sanity of all kinds of people yes. and all kinds of dogs. Yes, exactly. Exactly. It's also a it's a behavior that can be self-rewarding and gratifying to those individuals doing it, not the people, the dogs. Mm -hmm. Right. Those again, those dogs that don't get out much and don't really have much to do or to say to the world. When if you live someplace uh, with the fencing, a dog on one side and a a street or a sidewalk and people regularly walk by and your dog regularly bark, 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 kind of barks them off. In your dog's mind, their barking works to get rid of that thing that it was that was on the other side of that dang fence that, hey, world, I can make this thing go away. Watch this. I, 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 and freaking it goes away, right? Yeah. It almost, because people have a place to go. They're not just going to stand there. <laughs> Except if it's somebody like me and I stand there. And when the dog stops barking, then I'll stop. I'll start moving again. Nanny, nanny, nanny. We don't know. Yeah, but there, hey, there's sometimes where I do that yeah. and recognize that the dog is so overstimulated that yeah. it can't. Right. It can't. It, it, it goes overboard. So that's not, you know, I am right. always looking, what's that dog's behavior? And am I affecting it in a way that I'm teaching it something? Or is right. this not working at all? Right. So the, one, the very first thing is... If you have this kind of situation, dogs on the other side of the fence, if there's any way that you can communicate with the owners and have a relationship with them. Not to say that you have a, anybody has a bad dog. That's not what we're talking about. We're just talking about there seems to be this reactiveness on the other side of the fence. So can we set up a time where your dogs are out at 10 to 2 and we're out from 2 to 6 or something like that? Mm -hmm. Um it can't. It doesn't always happen that way. Lots of times, people aren't interested in working or training with them, and there's lots of reasons why. Right. So then it comes down to us. It comes down to controlling our dogs. Mm -hmm. And quite honestly, I don't think it's okay for Daisy to go over and do that. We've talked about how we can control her and help her to not do it, mm -hmm. and I think you've already taken steps to make that happen. But she shouldn't get to just run up to any gate or door or fence or inside a car or anywhere and just alarm, bark, and kind of freak out. Yeah. That's that's just not okay to do that. So 
taking it back from there. You can't control what's going on the other side of the fence, but you can control what's going on in your side of the fence. Right. You can make it a really good experience. We can teach her to leave it. Yes. What we And that means turn your head away from whatever it was that you were orienting to, whether it's right. food or a dog or a cheese sandwich on the floor or a dead yeah. fish. It doesn't matter. Right. Whatever. And it doesn't even matter that you see the thing. You can yell, leave it to her, and she went around the corner mm -hmm. and leave it, whatever it was that's around the corner. She should go, oh, I know what that means. Never mind. Exactly. <laughs> I'm coming, Mom. I'm coming. You have yeah. to firstly right. control the environment first. Right. So if every time you let her out the door, you can predict, I'll give you 20, you'll give me 20 bucks. I bet you this would happen, mm -hmm. that she's going to take off, go around to the right, and go right over to that same fence line where yep. all the activity happens. Yep. And whether that dog is there or not, she's still going to go, ah, inviting it. So right. the very, hey, are you there? Ah, I'm here. Ah. I mean, yeah. come on. Nobody likes that. Yeah. The dog cannot even be home. The people could be sleeping. It could, I mean, it's not a good thing. So the first thing you do is control that environment. If you know she does that, don't let her do it. Right. Put her on a lead. Yep. How about you have her stay? How about she doesn't go outside until you go outside and check it out first? Mm. Is that dog here? Mm -hmm. What does that look look like? If there's somebody else in the house, maybe you could go out first, make sure it's cool. Then they could open up the door, right. and then they come running out. That's one. If there's only one of you, you could just, how about put her on a lead? Well, now, that's what I've started to do. And brilliant. It's, and, yeah, I just started it today <laughs> because I remembered, you know, after she did the whole run around the house and launch yourself at the fence. And she launched herself at the fence when I was there, and I did a real firm lean it. Yes, And she did. bounced back, I yep. swear to God, three feet and went, oh, shoot. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And then continued on. It's like, okay, good. Right. Somebody's told her that before. She didn't act like I was going to beat her up. She just went, oh, okay, thanks. Right. I I understand yep. it. Yep. She did it a little bit later on, but the fact that she responded in an appropriate way the first time means I think There's it's going to be pretty easy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She in the future, you're not going to have to go. Rah! You're just going to have to go. I said, leave it. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. sorry, mom. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I said, come by. I know what that out. means. I know what that means. Another thing, the other th one of the other things we discussed was. Um, covering up the area where yes. they could see each other You're through right. the fencing. So there are different ways that you can cover that up. Um, you had some kind of black weed material mm -hmm. that would be really easy just to put up on a fence line temporarily. I mean, it could be a, a training thing. Sure. Because I want her to get to the point where it doesn't matter what's on the other side of the fence. Even if it was open chain link right. and there's another crazy dog on the other side, let them be crazy. That's your dog isn't the crazy one, but it takes training yeah. and it takes consistency on your part. It isn't your husband or somebody else in the family. Ah, oh, it's okay. Let them do it, and then somebody else is really trying hard. If you want results and you want it to be qu sooner than later, it has to be consistent. Be consistent, yeah. and it's not yeah. difficult. No. I mean, no, you no. know, it's but it it's does take tough. paying attention and, and paying attention. That's it. That's Kelly. I know. I'm so sorry. I'm looking at the clock. Okay. We have one minute. Oh, I know. How did that happen, right? Let's just say, please, people, just pay attention. Yes. We brought him into our lives. Just pay attention. What makes him happy? What doesn't? What do you need to work on? Um, and ask for help if you need it. it. That's not so tough. Thank you. Thank you so much for it's being my pleasure, here. I really, people. I just so appreciate you coming I, on the show. I it's love just, being here for real. It's just the best. I love you. And I want to thank you for listening. I can't imagine my life without a dog. I know the animal shelters are full. So if you're thinking about adding a family member, try the shelter first. The senior dogs especially need a soft place to live out their days. I'm Candace Michelle, and this is Our Community.